This video will discuss the anti-symmetry principle and the Pauli exclusion principle in quantum mechanics as applied to atoms. So the anti-symmetry principle says that all electronic wave functions must be anti-symmetric under the exchange of any two electrons. So this means if we have a wave function which depends on two electrons, psi1 and, and psi2, or electron1 and electron2, if we switch the labels, if we take everywhere we have electron 1, make that electron 2, and everywhere we have electron 2, make that electron 1, so that simulates the exchange of two electrons, that when we do that, it should equal our original wave function times a minus sign. So note the symmetry for it being the same and anti for it being the opposite sign. So we've had a decent time in the previous few videos looking at Hartree-Fock for helium, but before we generalize Hartree-Fock to atoms bigger than helium, we have a problem that we need to solve using the anti-symmetry principle. So what we've been using for our wave functions is been called is what we would call a Hartree product. So we have a wave function that depends on two electrons, and we say it's a it's a product of two one-electron functions: psi one where electron one is, and psi two where electron two is. Now we have a problem with this because if you switch all the labels here, move electron 1 to electron 2 and vice versa, psi 2 1 is equal to psi 1 of 2 and psi 2 of 1. Now electron 2 is in orbital 1 and electron 1 is in orbital 2. So did the wave function switch signs here? And the answer is no. Psi 1 2 is not equal to minus psi 2 1. So the anti-symmetry principle says this cannot be a valid wave function. A Hartree product alone cannot be a valid wave function for an atom with multiple electrons. So what do we have to do instead? Well, we can force our wave function to be anti-symmetric by construction. So let's take a wave function like this. Let's say we have psi 1, 2. This is going to equal psi 1 of electron 1 times psi 2 of electron 2 minus orbital 2 with electron 1 times orbital 1 with electron 2. What happens if we switch all the labels for electron 1 and electron 2 here? So make this 2, 1, 2, 1. So psi 2, 1 now equals psi 1, 2, psi 2, 1, minus psi 2, 2, times psi 1, 1. If you'll notice, this term is equal to the negative of this term. This term is equal to the negative of this term. So in fact, the way we have constructed this, we have made psi 1, 2, equal to, that should be minus, equal to minus psi 1, 2. I'm not happy with that minus, let me fix Much better. Okay, so this is the case for a two electron system. So the solution we're gonna use in general is called a Slater determinant, which we'll discuss in the next video. All right, so one other thing that pops out here for um, relevance to us is the case where if you have psi 1 equaling to psi 2, so let's say we have two orbitals that are equivalent to one another, both in, sp in their spatial part and their spin part, which we haven't discussed yet, but let's assume these are what, co what are called spin orbitals and they are the same. So we have if psi 1, 2 equals psi 1 of 1 times psi 1 of 2 minus psi 1 of 1 times psi 1 of 2. So we've done this type of uh, anti-symmetry trick here and we've, and we've taken the orbitals and switched, put a minus sign there whenever we switch them. But notice that since orbital 1 and orbital 2 are the same now, what has happened is this term is equal to the negative of this term. Those are the only two terms, so those cancel, so our wave function is 0. So what's happened here is if we put two electrons in the same orbital, our wave function goes to 0. So that is a, a qualitative statement of the Pauli exclusion principle. So this anti-symmetry principle, which forces us to have a wave function which is anti-symmetric under the exchange of any two electrons, results in the fact that we can't use Hartree products for our wave function. We have to instead use what we will later show to be Slater determinants. And that results in the fact that if two electrons are in the same orbital, our wave function goes to zero, which is in agreement with the Pauli exclusion principle, which we are familiar with from general chemistry, that two electrons cannot be in both the same orbital and have the same spin.